This is one of my favourite planes and I just had to build it. So a very quick look at some of the sprues. The kit was originally made by Academy and they sold them all to Revel. The detail is very, very good, as I'm sure you'd agree, including uh, the cloth effect on the, the wings, uh, as well as all the, the rivet detail. Um, so there you can see the, the cloth effect and the rivet detail. It's an exceptional kit, very little flash. So here I'm just annealing the photo etch. I've had a few issues recently with photo etch where it's just not behaving itself correctly. And um, so I thought I'd anneal it because then it will uh, bend and fold and hold its shape a bit better. There was a fair bit of detail with the photo etch and uh, the cockpit took quite a long time to put together actually. The other thing of this build is the amount of weight it needs in the nose and the difficulty I had getting that weight into the nose uh, was proved very difficult. But putting together the cockpit and that was uh, very handy. I'm just burning off the super glue on that shot. And these parts are absolutely minute. Photo etch was very small being a 172 scale and of course you're not really going to see it but it's quite nice to do because it gives me a sense of satisfaction uh, knowing it's just not a piece of empty plastic on the inside. That said the um, photo etch to make the guns for the like the bubble windows in the fuselage was extremely hard, extremely difficult. Um, and I just struggled with it all the way. I wish I just kept with the kit plastic parts. Uh, more so now because after I've fitted them all in and glued them in, the um, during the process of building the plane after they were masked off. And now of course they've come off and are in the inside of the plane. So here I'm just cutting the parts off, ready to build the plane. So whizzing through, most people know how to do that. And it starts actually with the wheel bays, if you want them uh, in the landing formation or with the wheels retracted. I'm having them with the wheels retracted as I want the floats down and the wheels up. I've noticed that a lot of people build them floats down and wheels down. Um, but unless you were sort of landing on the water and then going onto a beach, this wouldn't really occur, although that could happen. So once I've cut all the parts out, getting them ready, done the photo etch, I always like to put a bit of uh, um, flat black or uh, white on, um, just because they but the top coat adheres a lot better with this base coat.
You may have seen there was a bit of filling on a couple of ejector pin marks. There wasn't too many overall. Oh, and at this point, the, for some reason, I had a lot of problems with the flat back and my airbrush. I ended up doing a very deep clean on it. Um, I've never had that before. So I'm just using regular interior green, uh, pretty standard colour. This is a very nice colour actually. But yeah, around this time I ended up um, having issues with my airbrush and having to uh, replace a couple of parts. Uh, one of them got damaged but overall it looked all right and I was fairly pleased with it but So here I'm just using some black black wash to um, uh, weather the cockpit down a little bit. Uh, the seat belts and most of the colours are they're all different shades of green, so it looks very similar. And that bit, the right at the front, is where you got to get all that weight for the. And it's like 45 grams or something to go in the front, um, and you just have not got the room to get that amount of weight in there or well, you, you have but it's extremely tight because of this getting the weights in um, I had to build it off screen, so apologies for that. Um, and it was pretty troublesome to say the least. And I had um, ball bearings flying all over the place, and anyway, if you know what I mean. I was constantly blown away about how big the wings were uh, on this on this particular plane. And this, this 172 model is uh, quite a bit bigger than some of our 148s. Always do a dry fit.
these front wheel flaps were an absolute uh, to do, they were very difficult. So once again I'm using interior green and spraying it over the transparencies um, so it's got green on the inside then if you were inside looking up you would see the internal frame being green so this goes on before the uh, base coat or flat coat I was pretty happy with Mr. Color Intermediate Blue 366 as being the main camo color. Of course, at this point, it did reveal um, seam lines and holes, which I had to fix before continuing. Um, yeah, particularly around the, the nose and the cockpit area, uh, ended up having to sand back hard and uh, do a bit of uh, rescribing. Not my strong point by any means. So I've stuck the wings on, and and now I'm just putting a gloss coat on. I like to use pledge, it's cheap, does the job. The decals were absolutely excellent, really very good. Although I would suggest you lot of use a lot of um, uh, decal solutions because they they want to stick straight away i use my cassette and my soul but yeah yeah put a lot on and um they will want to stick straight away so be aware of that but they're extremely thin and very good Just working some air bubbles out, ready to put the microsole on.
So I'm using Tamiya's panel liner. Uh, this is the dark grey. I ended up going over to the black. Um, the grey was alright, but I just wanted a bit more definition than it was given. Um, and basically, you put it on and then let it dry off and then remove it. And uh, I used um, some lighter fluid to remove it later on. Uh, I haven't got much footage of that, so apologies for that. But it all worked out in the end, so it's looking good. A lot of these World War Two Catalinas, especially in the Atlantic screen, the early versions, which is this, um, they were pretty heavily worn, uh, a lot of chipping, they were beaten up quite a bit. Um, I just can't go over the planes, it's absolutely beautiful and, uh, and lovely sound, lovely noise. Uh, and first tile plane, it was built and used for many, many years. So basically, yeah, you end up putting a lot of dirt on the model and then having to take it all off again. Um, as you can see, it's filthy, but it does come up and it comes up all right. I just want to say um, thanks for everybody who subscribed. Uh, it's, it's quite humbling. And um, yeah, if you if you like to do that, then that's great. Um, it does um, give me a bit of a boost, a bit of an ego boost, but uh, that's about all it does. Um, but yeah, it's wonderful when um, people leave positive comments and uh, constructive comments too. Um, so thanks guys, it's really appreciated. So uh, yeah, after applying the camo colour and then the, the decals, now I've done some weathering washes on it and pinged out the rivet lines and panel lines. I'm um, just going over now with the camo colour and some white paint and highly diluted uh, with thinner to um, give some tonal variations um, to the kit. So I'm using Tamiya's Smoke X19 for the first time. Uh, it's quite watered down. Now the images I saw with these um, exhausts um, showed them being much, much heavier weather than what I'm doing in this build, but this is as much as I wanted it to be. And just some chipping with uh, a sponge and some aluminium. I've already done uh, most of the plane. It's just these propellers that are left. So I just see it with the matte varnish to protect the work that's gone before. Um, just to take the um, shine off it. A little bit of rigging for the 
antennas. Just the tiniest drop of super glue on there. It should take straight away once you do this. And the trick there is to leave that alone now uh, and come back in five minutes. I love the masks off, absolutely, and who doesn't really does start to bring it to life. Unfortunately, as I suspected, there was a few rattles in the plane when I pick it up and move around. I thought one, it could be some of the ball bearings have come loose from the nose, or it's the photo etched guns in the bubble windows in the fuselage. And sure enough, it was the guns in the fuselage, which were rattling around. With hindsight, I wish I'd done the plastic ones with the kit. So, some final photos of the finished model. If you'd like to see how I made the sea base, there's a separate video. But I'm absolutely in love with the plane I'm really pleased with my work and um, I know it's not up to some people's standards but I've only been doing it for a year or so uh, and I'm chuffed to bits with it thanks for watching guys so if you want to like and subscribe or, or not it's up to you but it does help um, and I appreciate it thank you very much